My name is Mark Josephson. I'm an electrophysiologist and chief of cardiology at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. I think that you've taken this uh, somewhat out of context and moved it 10 years into the future. Uh, the present study was done in people who only already have had an event. Uh, Scudhaft and Matted too were uh, studies that looked at the prophylactic use of devices in patients who've never had an event. In that group of patients, I think it's quite clear, particularly in Scudhaft, that the benefit of the device for total mortality is about 1.4 percent per year and uh, even about 1 percent per year if you just look at sudden death. So it's extremely not efficient in the use of uh, devices in those populations because they're not well stratified. Uh, the uh, implantation of devices uh, just based on ejection fractions uh, alone would um, highly overestimate the efficacy of the device, which is small, I think, in an absolute sense as it is, but it is real and statistically significant. The fact of the matter is, it would be fine if devices had no downsides and were cheap. Uh, the device isn't cheap. It has downsides. Um, they include uh, a morbidity, mortality in implanting it, particularly in older people. Uh, leads are the weak link of all devices. Uh, we've heard about uh, uh, lead fractures that cause inappropriate shocks. Uh, we know that leads can get infected and then devices have to be removed. And if you want to replace them, it's even a higher rate of infection. Uh, devices may, in fact, be pro-arrhythmic. Uh, it's interesting that uh, more people get appropriate shocks with devices by a lot than in a control population in which there is no device implanted. And while some people say, well, that's because the device uh, picks up uh, events early that might self-terminate, I find uh, that uh, unsatisfactory since every single, that means 100% of studies that have looked at it, have shown a two- to three-fold increased incidence of shocks from ICDs when compared to the control population. So it may be that some of the devices, because of the, the way they pace uh, and the way uh, they pace not only to uh, keep the heart rate up but to uh, terminate arrhythmias, can actually make a non-lethal arrhythmia a lethal arrhythmia and get a shock. So I think there's no free, no free lunch. And I think that if you look at the potential complications in an unstratified uh, group of people, I think they may outweigh the benefits. And this is... Uh, something that many people are concerned about now, uh, the incidence of inappropriate shocks. Just one shock uh, basically ruins the quality of life for that patient. And if you're going to say 90% of patients don't need the, the device uh, and there's a 5 to 20% chance of an inappropriate shock, then you've ruined the quality of life of somewhere between 5 to 20% of patients. And at the same period of time, you may help five or six percent of people. So I think that uh, without even talking about uh, morbidity, mortality of implantation, the complications of lead fractures, the um, infection rate, et cetera, I think that uh, one has to raise the question of who should get the device? Can we identify patients more likely to need the device as well as those who are less likely to need the device? And in those patients who may need the device, I think it still would be worthwhile to eliminate the potential use of the device because even if it needed and used, those patients in whom the device is appropriately used because the patient has an event have a higher instance of heart failure, hospitalization, and death. So I think by preventing uh, shocks, you're doing a good thing.